Caribbean Newsline is brought to you by the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. Nationwide strike and protest in French Guiana. That's our top story in Caribbean Newsline for Wednesday, March 29. From the CMC News Center in Bridgetown, I'm Nicole Best. Good evening. Protests continue in French Guiana as residents demand better treatment from France. More than 10,000 people, most of them clad in black, converged in the capital Cayenne on Tuesday as a nationwide strike entered a second day. Hundreds of demonstrators blocked roads, forced the closure of schools, and shut down businesses. The French government has dispatched two ministers to try to restore calm. A statement from the office of the French prime minister said the ministers would hold talks with key figures behind the protest to find a solution. The movement began with demands for greater security against crime in the territory, but it later evolved into more organized protests against rising cost of living and the poor quality of health care, among other issues. The South American territory has the highest murder rate among France's overseas regions. Over in Bermuda, a review of the police handling of protesters who blocked Parliament last December has found lawmen were not prepared for that unrest. One of the key issues of contention, the police use of pepper spray, did not feature in the report leased by the governor on Tuesday. We get more from Turai Trot of Bermuda Broadcasting News. The 16-page independent review of the Bermuda police actions on December the 2nd by a senior UK police officer is silent on the decision by police to use pepper spray on some protesters and thus fails to address whether or not the use of pepper spray was justified. The report focuses on three key findings, planning for the operation on December 2nd, the appropriate protester and stakeholder engagement strategies, and the ability of the Bermuda Police Service to exert effective command for confrontational operations, for which, according to the UK officer, Bermuda Police is limited due to a lack of exposure to such confrontations. The review found this was a challenging day for the Bermuda Police Service, where the officers and staff found themselves facing hitherto inexperienced levels of determination for which they are not adequately trained. It was found that police were confronted by determined protesters, some of whom were intent on disruption. However, police praise for their resilience despite the obstacles. The report makes a number of recommendations, among them that an overarching strategy be established and appropriate briefing for commanders for all long-running disputes. Police were taken to task for their planning for the December 2nd demonstration. The review finds the exact date that police planning for the operation began remains unclear. However, it is apparent that police were aware that there was a protest being held at the House of Assembly as early as November 21st. No police documentation could be found showing the exact date police began to plan for the event. Elsewhere, police were found to have failed to issue what is known in the UK as no surprises communication to the public before the protest. Such communication from police normally informs the public of what to expect during the lead-up to any event, as well as any warnings of disruption, road closures, and an engagement of protesters to make clear of the police expectations of lawful conduct. Not issuing this type of communication, says the review, potentially hampered police efforts on the day. Speaking after the release of the report, Commissioner of Police Michael De Silva admitted lawmen were taken off guard by the response of protesters on the day when they prevented parliamentarians from entering the House of Assembly. But he again defended his officers' use of pepper spray. Police officers did not use pepper spray indiscriminately. Those officers that felt threatened by protesters used pepper spray to defend themselves. That's, that's, why, they, that's why they carry it. Um, but your question is, why did it escalate? And I think part of it was, quite frankly, we expected compliance. That was our experience in the past, and we did not expect 
uh, that protesters would continue to block the gates. We actually thought that they would uh, remove themselves from the gate. And while the protest uh, would have taken place, we did expect that they would open the gates and allow the members of parliament access. While those affected by the pepper spray on December 2nd filed formal complaints against police, the commissioner confirmed that the matter is still subject to review and has been referred to the police complaints authority. And asked whether the review missed the mark in any areas, he says. I think it's a fair reflection of, of what we did and why we did it. And it's uh, perfectly acceptable recommendations of what we need to do differently next time. Meanwhile, Minister of National Security, Senator Jeff Barron, has stated in a release, I have received the report and will be reviewing it on the recommendations. It will be important for the Ministry of National Security to identify where we can support the Commissioner and the Bermuda Police Service in addressing those recommendations. He adds this review by an experienced public order professional of the events of December 2nd forms an important benchmark for how we strike the appropriate balance between the right to peacefully protest and the need to ensure law enforcement has the tools required to maintain public order and public safety. And that report was from Jasmine Patterson of Bermuda Broadcasting News. A bill to facilitate the implementation of the U.S. Foreign Account Compliance Act FATCA has been passed in Grenada's House of Representatives. The legislation provides for government sharing with the U.S. Internal Revenue Service, the IRS, information on American citizens who have more than 50,000 EC dollars in local financial institutions. The legislation also makes provision for the Comptroller of the Inland Revenue Department of the Ministry of Finance to be the competent authority with whom the IRS would communicate when seeking information. The Senate is expected to approve the legislation at its April sitting. Once it goes through all stages of Parliament, the law will apply retroactively, covering the years 2014, 2015 and 2016. Foreign observers have been invited to monitor the upcoming general elections in the Bahamas. And while Prime Minister Perry Christie has not yet disclosed the date for the poll, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs said the Bahamas has invited observers from CARICOM, the Commonwealth, the OAS and the United States. The announcement comes amid allegations of voter irregularities in the lead up to voting day. The Parliamentary Registration Department confirmed reports of people registering at least more than once in some constituencies. Parliamentary Commissioner Sherlyn Hall said he had referred a case to the police in which someone registered within five days at two different locations. And police confirmed that a man was arrested for alleged voter registration fraud based on Hall's report. Both the ruling Progressive Liberal Party, the PLP, and the main opposition free national movement, the FNM, have been trading accusations, with FNM leader Dr. Hubert Minnis telling a rally over the last weekend that the Parliamentary Registration Department's computer had crashed, resulting in several names of registered voters being erased. But National Security Minister Dr. Bernard Nottage has dismissed that claim. Meantime, Deputy Prime Minister Philip Davis says it's too soon to tell whether the attempt at multiple registrations is a deliberate, is a deliberate act or a case of misunderstanding. I don't know what inform those, what they call double registration. Um, there, could be, there, there are a lot of misconceptions that's out there in the minds of the uh, Bahamian public. For example, um, whether they had to re-register after the close of the register. Um, because I know of persons who were querying, having registered and not got their card, when they heard that uh, the that the register um, had in fact died or was put to an end, were questioning whether they had to register again. So I don't know that it. I can't speak to it whether whether it was deliberate or whether that's complete misunderstanding on the part of of the electorate themselves. And I think that's something the Parliamentary Registration Office will investigate and deal with. Still to come in Caribbean Newsline, prison officers in Trinidad and Tobago appeal to government for better security in the country's jails. That story and more after the break. Do stay with us. So, DJ Nori, he is fun, professional, and a great guy. 
What's up, guys? Everybody doing all right? What's going on? I just finished having a little lunch with Kibo, and we definitely was talking about you guys. And he said y'all was going to be down here. But so while I'm driving to the airport, I said, let me come over here. Wish y'all all y'all the luck. Round Hay Pharmacy now has two locations to fill your prescriptions promptly and efficiently. Our branch at One Accord Plaza is open daily, including Sundays and bank holidays. Also, check out our new drive through location at Warren's Healthcare Complex in Michael, the first and only drive through pharmacy in Barbados. For more information, call Round Hay One Accord Plaza at 421-7863 and our new drive through branch at Warren's in Michael at 424-5574. Welcome back. Prison officers in Trinidad and Tobago say they are afraid for their lives because of the absence of basic security measures on the job, contending that government must take much of the blame for the murder of an inmate at the maximum security prison over the weekend. The Prison Officers Association says the officers don't have what is necessary to deal with the violence they face on an almost daily basis. Alicia Boucher of TV6 News has more. If CCTV cameras and an alarm system had been installed as recommended, if there were proper safety equipment such as stab-resistant vests, then Nicholas Raymond's life may have been spared. It's a presumption from the Prison Officers Association, but it's too late to know for sure. President of the association, Saren Richards, says the problems plaguing the Golden Grove prison will continue unless the issue of security is treated with urgency. The state, by and large, is largely responsible for the death of that inmate because had the state implemented these um, measures, we would have been more effective in protecting the lives of these inmates. Richard says prison officers are highly concerned. They believe that their security and the security of the lives of inmates at that maximum security prison is in serious jeopardy. But unlike many other factions of the public sector, prison officers are unable to abandon their duty as it's a potential death sentence to inmates. And Richards feels it is giving the government a license to ignore their cries for help. So I dare say that the state is acting advantageous as it regards to the treatment of the prison service and more importantly, the treatment of the lives of both prison officers and inmates. In fact, Richards says stabbings at the prisons are an almost daily occurrence, adding that a recent murder could exacerbate the situation. There is a high, high possibility of reprisal. So, of course, we have to be in a state of readiness to treat with that. And we are calling on the National Security Minister, we are calling on the Prime Minister as head of the National Security Council to do much better than they are doing now. In Jamaica, 32 prison officers are now certified to deliver the National Vocational Qualification Program to inmates. The certification training was done by the Vocational Training Institute at a cost of 1.2 million Jamaica dollars. It is part of a program to rehabilitate inmates and wards of the state. State Minister of National Security, Senator Pernell Charles Jr., says the goal is to make the trained prison officers ambassadors of reform in Jamaica's prison society. Our approach is to effectively uh, target our officers and use these partnerships to strengthen them so that they become the pillars in the DCS, the ambassadors of that tr transformation of the inmates. After months of salary negotiations, the government of Grenada and a joint negotiating team for the Public Workers Union and the Technical and Allied Workers Union have reached an agreement. On Tuesday, they signed a memorandum agreeing to a one-off payment of 1,000 EC dollars per person and salary increases for public workers up until 2019. The deal will increase government's spending on salaries by $1 million. Public relations officer for the team, Brian Grimes, told the media that although the process was tedious and both sides had to make serious compromises, it resulted in a win for all. 
terms of the, the back and forth uh, between government and the negotiating team. Um, but we have arrived at a point um, where we have um, had a solid and official agreement to go forward with. Public officers will receive a one-off payment of $1,000 for the period 2013 to 2016 during the structural adjustment period, as well as the negotiated increase. The payments are to be made in April. These monies would be paid at the end of April. Um, it has been circulated in the media that the monies would be paid at the end of March, but this is not so. Graham says now that salary negotiations have ended, they are moving forward with other issues, including pension and gratuity payments for public officers. Right? Um, public officers would have spoken about this time and time again. Um, this pension issue would have been around in excess of three decades, over 30 years. Successive governments would have tried and would have failed to rectify the problem and bring a resolution to the problem. What we have had is rhetoric. Um, I would like to commend this government because um, this government, um, via our Minister of Finance, um, our Prime Minister, would have put their legacy, their reputations on the line and given assurance that um, within a year and a half that the pension issue would be resolved. Right? So we commend them for that, that oral agreement to do so. But the Public Workers Union wants to make it abundantly clear that it will take more than oral agreement to do so. We need action. In fact, um, our newly elected executive uh, via our president-elect, um, Sister Rachel Roberts, um, she has put that at the pinnacle as far as what um, the achievements of the union and what they want to do on behalf of workers and behalf of the people in the country. And ahead in Newsline Sport, a controversial referee decision leads to another loss for Trinidad and Tobago in their CONCACAF final round World Cup qualifiers. Stay with us. Sport is next. It invites nominations for its next awards cycle in the categories Arts and Letters, Science and Technology, Public and Civic Contributions, and Entrepreneurship. Join the growing college of distinguished laureates from throughout the region we've honored in the last decade. Visit www.answercaribbeanawards.com for forms and instructions. Nominations close on March 31st. Round Hay Pharmacy now has two locations to fill your prescriptions promptly and efficiently. Our branch at One Accord Plaza is open daily, including Sundays and bank holidays. Also, check out our new drive through location at Warren's Healthcare Complex in Michael, the first and only drive through pharmacy in Barbados. For more information, call Round Hay One Accord Plaza at 421-7863 and our new drive through branch at Warren's in Michael at 424-5574. It's not about exercising. It's having the strength to do what you're passionate about. It's not about the road traveled. It's about the one to be traveled. An important thing in life is finding the perfect balance between body and soul. With a bottle of Ensure, you get the proteins, calcium, and 26 vitamins and minerals your body needs to live the best moments of your life with strength and energy. Your life, your health, your Ensure. A controversial refereeing decision condemned Trinidad and Tobago to their third defeat in four outings as they went down 1-0 to Mexico in their CONCACAF final round World Cup qualifier on Tuesday night. Playing at the Hazley Crawford Stadium, TNT appeared to have taken the lead in the 32nd minute when Jovin Jones put through on the left by the enterprise and Kevin Molino fired an explosive left-footed volley past goalkeeper Alfredo Talavera into the upper right-hand corner. However, the celebrations of local fans were quickly cut short as the referee's assistant on the far side raised his flag for offside, leading to Jamaican referee Valde Legista disallowing the goal. But replays clearly showed Jones two yards behind the last defender when the ball was played. The decision proved costly for Trinidad and Tobago as Diego Reyes's 58th minute header then gave Mexico the lead, which they managed to preserve. Captain Kenwin Jones says they were disappointed.
Overall, with the result, I think a little bit disappointed. Um, we should have at least had a point from the game, I think, if not go on to win the game. Um, we had uh, <clears throat> a goal taken away from us by some poor decision making. But unfortunately, that's how the game goes. And then we had a, a moment of lapse in concentration and, you know, it cost us in the end. But at the end of the day, I think the, um, the guys could be proud of their, their efforts and can also build on it, looking forward to the other set of games coming up. But Jones is calling on his troops to still believe in themselves as they take on two more football giants in June. Well, whether at home or away, um, in, this, in this round, um, <clears throat> that's what is necessary to go away and take points away from the teams that are at home. So we have two tough games coming up, USA and Costa Rica, and we're going to... Um, buckle down and, and, and focus on that when we get together and, and try and get the points. TNT now lie bottom of the six-team group with three points, while Mexico remain unbeaten and move to ten points. Three points clear of Costa Rica, who drew 1-1 away to Honduras. Panama lie third on five points after holding United States to a one-all stalemate at home. Meanwhile, head coach Dennis Lawrence says while there was not enough aggression from the Soka Warriors, the team was a better composed side against Mexico. The former defender insisted that the goal, which put TNT in the lead in the first half, was a legitimate one. I didn't think we did enough to, to win the game, but I also felt we did enough to get something out of the game. Um, I think we were a bit unlucky. With the goal that we scored, it was clearly onside from what I saw. Um, I can't fault the boys for effort. The only thing I said to them is that sometimes we need to believe how good we can be. So we spoke about things before the game, we go into the game, and then we allowed the Mexican team to get too much control of the game. As soon as we won the ball, we gave it back to them. But in terms of our organization, our structure defensively, we had to lose the game, conceded from a set piece. It was difficult to break us down in open play, but we didn't do enough to take the, to take the game in the other end. The Soka Warriors will be on a two-month break before they return to national duty. Lawrence says in the meantime, he will be working with those who are available to him. The way forward at the moment is the boys who are abroad are going to go back to their clubs. The, 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 the focus needs to remain the same. And the belief has to remain the same. We've got two very difficult games in the next meeting up in June, which is going to be two games away from home. But we have to prepare ourselves mentally. And then when we come together as a group, we have to try and believe that it can still be done. Because as I said, it's just for the boys to start believing in themselves and understanding that they're capable of doing it. Um, I'm going to be here, the local players. I'm not sure about their availability. But the moment they're available, we'll be working with the local players again because the work has to continue. Over to cricket, West Indies bowling coach Roddy Eswick is calling on the regional side to stay focused ahead of their second T20 match against Pakistan. The team is in Trinidad to prepare for tomorrow's showdown. Captain Jason Holder suggested that unfamiliarity with the Pakistani players led to their defeat. But Eswick says the team needs to clear any doubt about their opponents in their remaining three matches. To muzzle the players too much, you really don't want to put too much fear in them. You still want them to go to and express themselves. So it's, a very, it's, a, it's very important that they stay clear in your mind. Once your mind becomes a little um, too clouded, you make poor decisions. So you, even though you, you've got your plans, you still want people to be free and be able to express themselves. The team has already reviewed the footage of Sunday's loss and are putting it behind them. But Aswick says his charges are looking forward to batting on the Queen's Park over a wicket. He also rubbish talk about having Jason Holder and Carlos Braffitt playing together in the team, taking away a selection spot from a specialist player, stating that you can't please everyone. You know, if you go around and you ask 100 um, supporters, they all come with different views. And once you start worrying about all these d different things, you, you, you never get it 100% right in the, in the eyes of the supporters. What you've got to do is back the players who get selected, give them the support, and continue to work with them. Because if you don't do that, then you're looking for trouble. And that report was from Ruskin Mark of C Sport. Sean Bridgemohan continued to end the fairgrounds winter meet strongly, reeling off a double on Monday's 10 race card at the Southern United States racetrack, and that's horse racing. The Jamaican Road winners in race three with 4 1 chance Sporty Boy, and in race nine with 8 1 bet Star Bade. 
and he grabbed a share of the headlines going a mile and 16th in race nine. The pair chased as She is Tricky, ridden by Giroux, carved out the early fractions. Bridge Mahan then set the filly down for the drive in the stretch and gradually hauled in the leader to win in the dying yards. John Dooley has the call. They're off. Even start. Here's Haniel. Fault strikes out toward the front. There she's Tricky, who angles over while clear of fillies for Florent Giroux as they make their way past the stands. She's Tricky has made the lead. On the outside is Picasso Moon, who's up close to the pace, along with between fillies Star Bear toward the inside is Fault in fourth position. Haniel in fifth, being led out to the stretch by She's Tricky. Blasted Boss is posted in the four to five path. Then toward the inside is Signal Path. As these three-year-old fillies go to the back of the course, the trailers are Rumgo outside uh, Signora Acero. 24 seconds flat for the first part. It's She's Tricky who dictates the field from Star Bear. And on the outside is Blasted Boss, who's third and well up there for Sophie Doyle, fourth, fourth holding the rail, with Haniel between horses in fifth. But Casamoon is outside those fillies in sixth position. They're well grouped in back of She's Tricky with just over a half mile to go. Signal path right there toward the rail at 12 feet for Robbie Alvarado. And the trailers remain Rumgo racing outside of Signora Acero looking to improve between fillies. A half mile in 49 seconds flat. 25 second middle quarter and She's Tricky continues to lead Star Bear. But now with inside three for longs to go. Blasted Boss still right there in close range. Picking up is Picasso Moon. In company with Haniel. Dropping back at the inside is Fault. Rumgo on the far outside as they come for home. And then Signal Path as they straighten with a quarter of a mile to go. Three quarters in 114 flat for the longtime leader. She's Tricky still has a furlong to get. It's She's Tricky who's in front here for the leading jockey. In pursuit is Star Bear there for Sean Bridge Mahan. They're deep in the final furlong. She's Tricky. Here comes Star Bear getting there yard by yard. Star Bear and She's Tricky. Star Bear! Starbear gets it from She's Tricky. Signal path third, Senora Acero fourth, Haniel fifth. Then Picasso Moon from Rumgo, Blasted Boss, and Fault. And that's the sport. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Caribbean Newsline is brought to you by the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. Picture this. Get away to one of the world's most beautiful islands. To experience the Digicel Barbados Reggae Festival 2017. Four of the biggest reggae events. April 23rd to April 30th. Featuring the biggest names in reggae. Popcon. Sprang events. Sanchez. Marcia Griffiths. Capleton. Conscience. Ventures. Flower Gone. Glenn Washington. Coco T. Won't you go home? Go home to your mama. And many more. Purchase your event tickets from TicketPal.com. For more details, follow Barbados Reggae Festival on Facebook or Instagram. Barbados, always on. Grow your business or promote your event through the services offered by the Caribbean Media Corporation and Carib Vision. Our distribution provides a platform on cable, terrestrial television, and websites. We cover carnivals and events from across the region. We can bring your event live and alive to the world. For music makers, program producers, businesses, we can expand your reach to in excess of 2 million households daily. Our other services include news updates to enhance your media products, studio space for program and development. We can facilitate the launch of new products and services and training. Contact us and we will help you unleash your creative ability, develop products and services, and provide the medium to watch them grow. Contact Loretta Skeet at cmccaribbean.com or call her 1-246-467-1044 or 1-246-253-3889. Call and book your carnival or event today. Again, the major developments of this day, the French government sends ministers to its overseas territory, French Guiana, to try to restore calm as a nationwide strike and protest for better treatment enters a second day. That's Caribbean Newsline. For news and sport around the clock, log on to carnanews.com. Have yourselves a good night.